Katoa katoa, no mai, haere mai, ki te whare kararehe o Tamaki Makaurau, ko Tori Tuku Ingoa. Hello everyone, we are so excited to be welcoming you to Auckland Zoo today. My name's Tori and I'm one of the conservation learning facilitators here at the zoo. We are so excited to have you joining us today as our trainee keeper for the day. The team that you're going to be joining today as our trainee keeper is our carnivore team. So carnivores are animals that mostly eat meat or animal tissue, just like our lions here. But we are not going to be looking after these beautiful girls today. We're actually looking after another species of carnivores. So we'll leave them to their playing and let's head over and meet the species we are looking after today. Now with the species that you're going to be looking after today, our cheetah sisters. So these cats are the fastest land animals and here at Auckland Zoo we have two cheetahs and they're sisters. Their names are Kia and Quartz and you're going to be responsible for looking after them today. But don't worry, we have an amazing team of experts that are going to teach you all about where they live, what their adaptations are and what they like to eat. I hope you have an amazing day today and good luck looking after these beautiful sisters. Hello everybody, my name is Cornell. I'm one of the educators here at Auckland Zoo. Here I am outside the uh, habitat of the cheetah here at Auckland Zoo. And I wanted to introduce you to some Māori words uh, that we can describe some of the features of our cheetah. So, what's the first thing we can look at? Well, it's really fast. You can see this long, slender body. It's really quick. So, a really good word to use for something that's really fast or running fast is oma tere, oma tere, and cheetah oma tere, a fast cheetah that runs. So that's a really good word. Another word uh, is mati hao. Mati hao means claws. You can see the mati hao on these um, particular cheetah. Semi-retractable meaning they don't go uh, all the way back in. They're always out uh, ready to grip when they're running uh, and catching their prey. Now they also have some really cool eyes, and eyes in um, te reo Māori is karu or fatu, and they have really uh, amazing eyesight, so they can be uh, called fatu koi, sharp eyes, which is really cool, or karu koi. Now and then we also have um, another great feature which is not shown here, but they are great sleepers, uh, pretty much like you are. So um, they have, uh, the word for sleep is moi, uh, so they have moi the chita. Uh, the cheetah is asleep. Now hopefully you can practice some of those words uh, at home. Uh, they're really good to adapt to some of our uh, the beautiful features of our cheetah ata who are here. Whare kararehe, Tam Kimakaura. Kia Hi guys, I'm a conservation learning facilitator here at Auckland Zoo, along with Tori and Cornell, and you're going to meet a couple of our other buddies really soon. First of all, I'm going to get you all to switch on your science brains, because today we're going to be looking at cheetah as if we're a biologist or a zoologist. First, take out your KWL chart. In the first column, I want you to jot down everything that you already know about cheetah and looking after cats. Then. Have a think about what you would like to find out, what you'd like to learn more about. And you can jot these things down in the middle column. Then at the end of the day, you can write down everything new that you've learned in the third and final column to track your learning throughout the day. Alrighty, we're all set and ready to learn. Let's go. Cheetah are normally found all the way over in Africa living in open, dry grasslands, which we can call the savannah. So they're not usually found here in Tāmaki Makoto, Auckland. So before we start looking after cheetah of our own, it is important that we do a bit more research to find out what makes them different to other animals, and how they're suited to living in the savannah habitat. This will help tell us some of their unique needs. As Tori said, Cheetah are carnivores, they're meat eaters, and at the zoo they are looked after by our specialist carnivore keepers. In the wild, the cheetah would be eating medium-sized animals, like different species of antelope, such as nayala, gazelle and springbok. 
but they can eat other animals like warthogs, rabbits, and the occasional bird if they want. Now, here at the zoo, we do give Kia and Quartz meat, but the main difference for these girls is that their meat is already caught and cut up into appropriate sized portions. We don't provide them with live prey to hunt. One of the most well-known facts about Cheetah is that they hold the title for fastest sprinter in the world, reaching up to 110 kilometers per hour. That's faster than mum and dad are allowed to drive on the motorway, and about three times as fast as us humans can run. But how do they get so, so speedy? First of all, Cheetah are quite small and slender for a big cat. They only reach up to 35 to 65 kilograms in weight. With less weight to carry around, cheetah are able to reach higher speeds in a shorter amount of time. They also have really small heads and small little ears which can flatten when they run to reduce drag. This gives them a more streamlined body and allows them to reach greater speeds as well. Now cheetah are equipped with really sharp claws that help them to catch live prey for food. Now most cats, domestic and wild, are equipped with claws that can withdraw or retract back inside their paws to some degree. Cheetah, on the other hand, only have semi-retractable claws. Now this means that their claws are always out to some degree. Okay, they never fully go back inside the paw. The reason for this is because they need extra grip when they're sprinting through the savannah, because the food that they're chasing can make really quick turns. Now, if the cheetah makes quick turns without having that grip, they could slip over and lose their feet. Okay. Now, if you play rugby or football, maybe you wear boots a bit like this, which have studs or spikes on the bottom. And these are there um, for the same reason, to stop you from slipping over when you're running on that muddy grass. Because a footballer cannot afford to lose the ball when they're in the middle of a game, just like a cheetah cannot afford to slip over and lose their prey. Sprinting at this kind of speed requires a lot of muscle power, and muscles require lots of oxygen to work. So cheetah require enlarged airways to help their body function. Okay? Now, cheetah have wide nostrils to allow a bigger uptake of air, they've got large, large lungs to store that air, and a big, strong, powerful heart to pump all that oxygen to the muscles. Now, have you ever been licked by a cat and noticed how rough that their tongue feels? Well, large wild cats like our cheetah have really rough tongues as well. And if you were to look at their tongue under a powerful microscope, you'd see that it's covered in heaps and heaps of little microscopic sharp hooks. These hooks are there to help the cheetah peel the fur and skin and layers off the carcass that they're trying to eat. It helps get more meat off the bone. Did you know that this animal's name actually comes from a Hindi word, cheetah? This means spotted one. And that's because these cats are covered in 2,000 to 3,000 spots all over their body. And no two cheetahs have the same pattern of spots, which is pretty cool. It's just like human fingerprints, how no two humans are the same. This arrangement of spots and the beige colored fur help the cheetah to camouflage when they're out in the savannah hunting down prey. And that means the prey don't see them coming. Now, on a hot sunny day, if you've ever touched the ground with your bare feet or touched a dark colored car, or even your hair, you might notice that dark colors tend to absorb the heat and light better than lighter colors. And if you look really closely at a cheetah's face, you can see dark fur surrounding their eyes and coming down the side of their nose a bit like teardrops. This dark fur helps to absorb some of the glare and light energy from the sun out in the hot, bright savannah. So they work just like built-in sunglasses for the cheetah when they're out in the savannah stalking down their prey, which means they can keep their eyes wide open and they don't miss anything. Cheetahs have long, muscular tails which help them balance while sprinting after prey and making those quick turns. If you have a pet cat, you might notice how it also uses its tail to balance. It works a bit like a rudder on a boat. Kia ora, ko 
you are, how you go in with your kids in the day for our cheaters. Have you learned a lot about their amazing adaptations? Well, now we're going to move on to think about their habitat. And habitat is a scientific word. It's just basically let us know where an animal lives in the wild. So let's say habitat, a little bit like a home, okay? Now, this comes under our science of care, looking at environment, where the animal lives. Now, here in Ports, they were born actually over in the Kango Wildlife Reserve in South Africa, back in 2015. If you think about the weather over there and the habitat there, it is quite warm and it's quite a dry heat, a little bit different to what we have here in New Zealand. So we're really gonna to have to consider that when we design the habitat for our chicken girls. So the habitat in the wild is made up of three different spaces. We're thinking of savanna, open woodland, and a semi-desert area. So when we think about our habitat design here, we have to consider how we can replicate that here in Aotearoa. So let's have a look at some of the design features we have here in the habitat. Now, first of all, you'll see that we've got this sheltered area with lots of straw here, as well as some heaters. And this is a nice dry place for them to go. And obviously it's gonna keep them nice and warm. They're used to that dry heat. We also have other, lots of other sheltered areas and platforms where they can rest at and they're covered. And also if it does get a bit too hot, they can go in the shade there. We have lots of trees for that coverage as well. As you can see, it's quite flat here. And we also have things like our platforms at the back. Now these platforms are really important and Kira Ports are actually up there right now. And what this platform allows is for them to be able to see. Now PJ was mentioning their eyesight and we know that our cheetahs can see about five kil kilometers away in the distance. So this platform actually allows Kira Ports to look at some of the other species that we have here at Auckland Zoo. Species like the zebra, the giraffe, the rhino, and the nyla. So that's a really, really important uh, aspect of their habitat. So we're going to give you guys a challenge now, and that is to design a habitat for our cheetah girls. Really, really thinking about how they move, how big the space needs to be, but also how can we make sure everyone stays safe? The cheetahs, the keepers, and us visitors. So really think about what we've spoken about, what we've shown you, where our cheetahs are from in South Africa, and also what physical space they will need. All right, good luck with your challenge and have lots of fun. Kakite. We're now going to consider the domains of health and behaviour from our science of care. And this comes down to enrichment. Now, a very important part of the keeper's day is actually studying and learning more about the species that they are looking after. We're actually conducting some research with Kino and Quartz at the moment by having some collars that they are wearing to track their movement throughout the day and night. This is really going to help us to know when to give them enrichment and what type of enrichment is working. Behavioural enrichment is when we give our animals opportunities to engage in their natural behaviour. So what you're going to have to do today is create a behavioural enrichment activity that will engage Kira and Quartz. Now, I am going to give you a hot tip, and that is the cats love to smell things. They've got an amazing sense of smell. So when we think about behavioural enrichment, it's about physically engaging them, but also mentally engaging them. So what these smells do is they allow Kira and Quartz to move around their habitat, and it allows them to be moving and really thinking about where is that smell coming from. So the types of smells we use here at Auckland Zoo are herbs and spices. It can be poo from other animals as well and even perfume. So we place that around their habitat and then when they go into their habitat, that's the first thing that they're going to really engage with, that sense of smell. So when you're designing a behavioural enrichment activity for our cheetahs, really think about can you use that amazing sense of smell? What else do you know about cheetahs? And how can you make sure that that behavioural enrichment is safe for our cheetahs, but also safe for you as well? All right, good luck in designing it. We're looking forward to seeing what you create. And you never know, we might actually use it here at Auckland Zoo. Paul Patrick Toku Ingwa. By now you're probably familiar with our two cheetah girls, Kia and Quartz, and they're here as ambassador animals to create support and awareness for cheetahs in the wild. Unfortunately, cheetahs are the most endangered big cat in all of Africa. 
A long time ago, cheetahs were quite widespread throughout Africa, but now are only found in a few countries throughout the continent. This is mainly because of habitat loss. Lots of people are moving into the areas that are cheetahs' favorite habitats to find their food. On these farms, sometimes cheetahs hunt their animals, whether it's goats or sheep or other animals. And this is a pretty easy dinner for a cheetah. The farmers are quite unhappy about this and sometimes will shoot the cheetahs. As you may know, cats are typically scared of dogs barking. So conservationists have figured out that that's the same for animals like cheetahs. So since 2004, the Conservation Fund in Auckland Zoo has supported programs like Cheetah Outreach, who train Anatolian sheepdogs to live on these farms. When those dogs see a cheetah, they bark really loud and scare the cheetah off, which means the farmers are quite happy because their animals are not eaten by cheetahs, but also great for the cheetah because their numbers still stay up and they're not getting killed by the farmers. While we don't have lots of cheetah running around here in Aotearoa, we do have lots of endemic animals that also need our help. Endemic animals are animals that are only found in the country, nowhere else in the world. So we do have fish, insects, birds that do need our help. Sometimes domestic animals like our pets, cats and dogs, can be a big threat to those amazing animals. So it's really important that we are responsible pet owners. Your next task is to come up with an idea of how we can safely protect our species by carefully managing pets at home. You could think about why it's important to walk your dog on a lead when you're near nesting birds or baby seals, or even putting a bell on your cat's collar or keeping them in at night. You're going to create a poster or a booklet about this topic that you can share with your school, kura, a vet clinic, or even post in your neighborhood. If you have pets at home, you can also create a behavioral enrichment item for your pet to keep their mind engaged. Good luck, training keepers! training today as part of the carnivore team. I hope that you had an amazing day learning all about our cheetah sisters and about their amazing species. Please remember that part of being a zookeeper is all about sharing the messages that you've learned today and educating other people about these amazing girls so they can also help these beautiful animals in the wild. Thank you so much for joining us today here at Auckland Zoo and we're looking forward to seeing you next time. Kaki te anō!